Hello, this is Steve from 8x8. In this video, we will cover the setup or creation of call queues. These are not contact center call queues. They're call queues which can be created in the admin console. So we are in the 8x8 admin console, we go to call queues. You can have many call queues on your system. And we will edit this existing one right here, but that will give you the information you need to create one from scratch. We'll begin with basic information. So the name will appear on the member's screen when they're presented with a call. So think about that when you give it a name. That's what's going to appear on their soft phone or on their desk phone as a call queue uh, call is being presented to them. And then you can attach it to a site, but be aware you can have members from other sites. So don't get too hung up on the site. Now, phone number is optional. So if the call queue needs to be reached directly from the outside world, then you would assign a phone number. If you didn't assign a phone number, it could be reached internally by extension, or it could be an option from your auto attendant. So your callers may call an auto attendant first, be presented with some options, one of which might be to be transferred to a call queue for maybe accounts payable or something like that. Uh, option to display it in the uh, directory. Now down here, we've got a few different timers we need to set. So the first thing is how many calls can be waiting in the queue? What's the maximum? 10 is recommended, but you could go out to 20 if you need to. If you find you are getting where you need a high number of calls waiting in queue, you might want to look at the 8x8 contact center, which is a little bit better suited for, for high volume uh, call traffic. Now you've got the wrap up time which is the grace period that a member is given before they're presented another call. So if they just finished up a call, then they're given some period of time that you can choose between you know, one second or 75 seconds where they're not presented with a new call. This gives them time to do things like, you know, catch a breath, drink water, and wrap up notes. Now delay after not answering. So what that means is if the member was alerted, and the phone rang whatever period of time we specified in this next field, we won't come back to them again until this period has expired. So this 60 seconds just saying, hey, you tried him, he didn't answer, don't bother this phone again for at least 60 seconds or whatever you want. You can have a max of, of two minutes. And then lastly is this, this timed alert. That's just how long do you want the phone to ring? Do you want the phone to ring for 15 seconds and if they don't answer, then try the next person. All right. Now you can control the login logout capability. So if you leave this switch turned on, then in the soft phone, they have a little icon where they can log themselves in and out of the queue or queues because members can be, be part of more than one queue. Um, and on the hard phone, they have a DTMF codes they can put in to log in and log out. Now, if you turn it off, then what happens is they don't have any ability to change their logout status, but an admin can come in here and do that manually. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Now let's get to the IVR message. So there's a canned message already built in that uh, says, you know, you, you, thank you for contacting us. We're, I don't know the exact verbiage, but there's just an introductory message that just lets them know that they're waiting for an agent to become available. And then it plays some music on hold, which is already in there. And then it will come back around and reprompt every so often um, at, a, at a period you specify. So that could be 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. It comes back and says another message. So again, there's canned messages already in here. However, there is the ability for you to upload your own audio file. So maybe instead of music, you have some kind of a branded message. Uh, and also you can modify the initial greeting and the uh, repeating uh, cue message. The initial greeting is probably gonna make the most sense if that cue is being reached from an outside phone number. So this is the very first message you play when the call is picked up in the queue. All right, and then optionally, if you turn this switch on here at the bottom, you can allow them to leave a voicemail. So I'm in a queue, I'm waiting and I'm waiting. Every periodic message that comes around, you know, based on this interval you set here, if you turn this on, the canned message will say, you know, if you'd like to, to exit the queue and leave a voicemail, you can press two. If you decide to upload your own message, then make sure that you include that in your message if you're gonna leave that switch turned on. If you turn it off, then there's no option for them to be able to, to exit out to voicemail. 
Okay, down here is where we put in the members. Now there's two types of members. There's primary members and secondary members. So primary members is your main group of call queue members, the people that you primarily want taking the calls, and then you can have an overflow into secondary members. So what you do is you choose from this pick list and you add your, your members as needed. And when you add them, there's a few options you have in here, one of which is uh, the ability to, remember I said if you turn this switch off, I'm sorry, up here, if you turn the switch off about log in, log out, then you can manually determine whether they're gonna be logged in or logged out. All right, so right now I've just logged Cookie Monster into the queue. All right, so it really comes down to whether you want it administered by an individual uh, administrator or whether you want to let the agents or the members do the, um, the logging in and logging out. All right, also in this uh, little ellipsis is the ability to remove their access to the voicemail. So if you did have that option to, to allow them to go to voicemail, then you could uh, have some members have access to the voicemail while others may not. All right, now secondary members have the same type of properties, but how do I reach a secondary member? That will happen when either all the members in the primary group are logged out, or all the members in the primary group have set their phones maybe to do not disturb, or are otherwise on a phone call. Because if a member's on a phone call, whether it's a queue call or whether it's just an internal, I mean, a, a direct call, they don't get presented with a call queue. So if you've exhausted the opportunity to reach any one of these people in the primary uh, member group, then we roll over to the secondary member group. And yes, it will come back to the primary. So if we've exhausted this, we come to the secondary, and we can't reach anybody in the secondary, we will come back to the primary group. All right, and then last few items here, we've got external caller ID. So going back to the top, remember I said that you could optionally have a phone number. If you do have a phone number, then this switch becomes available and you can then give the members of that group the ability to turn on this external caller ID uh, for making an outbound phone call. So if I normally make outbound phone calls and show my direct number, except when I'm calling on behalf of this call queue group that I'm in, say maybe it's accounts payable, well, maybe I wanna transmit a different caller ID well, if you turn this on, that gives me the ability to elect that phone number on my soft phone before I make a phone call, I'm outbound. All right, voicemail settings. Uh, you, you've got the opportunity here to, to uh, change the external and internal uh, voicemail greetings. And then also you do need to set a pin. So there'll be a little spot where you have to put in a six digit number. Uh, you do have to do that in order to save it. So even if you're not gonna use voicemail, you still have to set a pin. All right, now lastly is call forwarding rules. And these are similar to the user call forwarding rules, but they're a little bit different in that you can't create new custom rules. So if you're familiar with the user rules, they have a little plus sign right here where you can make your own custom rules. Well, in the call queues, you can't do that. These are the, the, the four rules that you get. However, you can change the destination. So for instance, if the queue is completely full, meaning that we remember way up here at the top, we said, what's the maximum number? of calls we can have waiting. Well, if that 11th call comes in, then you could have a queue as full condition, but maybe instead of going to voicemail, maybe you wanna have it go to say an auto attendant or something, some other destination, all right? And the same thing is true for the logged out. If for some reason everyone is logged out or they're set to do not disturb, you could either let it go to voicemail or you could decide to have it go to some other destination. All right, so that's everything for call queues. Finally, when you're all done, you click save and your call queue is ready to go. Thanks for watching.